Could you elaborate a little bit on how did you arrive at Microtrends compared to Toffler and, and Nesbitt? Well, I think what I really noticed is that the era of megatrends is over and that it's no longer just about a few big trends that are out there, but that really what's happening is that people are forming smaller and smaller groups, oftentimes around 1%, uh, and that these groups can be extremely powerful in the marketplace. They can kind of change how we communicate, they can change elections, they can create, if they're just one, two, or three million people, they're going to be a best-selling car, a best-selling book, a tremendous movie that people want to go see. So it's now time to really see how microtrends are developing and how people are splitting up into so many new categories. And how did you arrive at, the, at this conclusion about identifying trends? I mean, how, what, what led you there into that? <clears throat> well, you know, I really have spent 30 years going through trends and analysis using numbers, using polling and statistics. You know, in the famous 1996 presidential election in the U.S., I identified soccer moms as a, as a new group that uh, people had been so focused on manufacturing, working male voters uh, who didn't go to college, they forgot that there was a whole new group of, of uh, soccer moms, women in the suburbs who were working, sending their kids to school with a completely new set of needs, both economic, uh, marketing, political, uh, and just in terms of taking care of their kids. Thank <laughs> you.